Thanks for joining me today for a new card making video. This time we are going to create 10 cards with one product. And the product today is Brushos. And you already see that I'm starting to create two backgrounds that we'll be using for our cards. I'm sprinkling the Brusho powders onto the wet surface. And when there is too much water, I take a dry brush and soak it up. Let's start with the first card. I'm using a flower stamp from Tim Holtz and archival ink. For every card today I'm using watercolor paper and simple card bases from the dollar store. That's what I love about brushes. You can not only create great backgrounds, you can also use it as a watercolor palette. I want to create a really soft background, so I use water and just a little bit of color. While my background is drying, I cut out the flower. I use a combination of stamping and a die cut for my sentiment. Finally, I adhere my flower with 3D foam pads and mount it to a card base. For my next card, I am stamping an image directly to the watercolor paper that I'm using as my card front. You can easily replace all the other products I'm using for my cards with other stamps or dies. To make the rabbit pop, I try to color the outside of the rabbit darker than the inside.
I want to emboss the sentiment, so I have to make sure that the background is bone dry before I add the embossing powder. For the next card I'm using an embossing resist technique and I use a white flower stamp and emboss it with white powder. For this card I used the papers from the beginning and I die cut a mixed media die from Tim Holtz through my card front and adhere the colored paper to the back. For this card I start by die cutting three shells from the card front and adding a sentiment. I'm using the blue paper this time and adhere it to the back side. I use 3D foam tape to mount everything to the card base. The next card is my favorite one and I run the watercolor paper through an embossing folder and I cover the raised areas with a brusho wax resist stick. This is a waxy stick and I try to catch every raised area. I 
add water and brushes to my cart until I'm happy with the result. I lay this aside to dry. Don't dry it with your heat tool because you will melt the wax and it will melt into the color. In the meantime I'm coloring the wildflower die cuts. These are also from Tim Holtz. And I use brushes from my palette and also directly onto the flowers. I die cut the cut front with a stitched frame die and distress the edges with walnut stain. I use glue dots to fix the wildflowers. I cut the sentiment also from the background paper I created at the beginning and distressed the edges with walnut stain. Finally I'm using glossy accents to glue my wildflowers down. The background for the next card is done the same way than the last one. I used the resist sticks and an embossing folder. I emboss some leaves to the card base before I add the front.
I adhere my background at an angle and cut off the edges. Finally, I add an embossed sentiment that I stamped onto a banner. Another great benefit of the brushes is that you can really easy create natural texture. I die cut the little elephants from the background paper we created at the beginning and adhere them with glossy accents. For the last card I die cut some hearts from the background paper. I cover some black cardstock with double sided tape and cut out a sentiment. I adhere the cards with 3D foam pads. I hope you got some inspiration today and you like the video. Please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. This will become a regular series and if you have some ideas which products I should use for the next 10 cards, please tell me in the comments. Thanks for joining me today. Bye!